Alright, so this is the Jobo. It's the same thing as what you get. So I'm just guessing here, because I got all this as a just a bunch of hodgepodge stuff. You're going to get this tank, which is the 1520, which you said, so it's going to come with a center core tank and the lid with the cog on it, as well as the reels, which personally I think the Jobo reels are some of the best reels. Um, I think they're better than the Patterson reels, and I don't like metal reels. So you can, there's a little red tab where if you want to load two rolls of 120, you can, and you just open the tab, put one on, close the tab, and then it won't let the two rolls overlap each other. Or if you just load one roll of 120 on here, what it does is it prevents it from rolling farther in, so you can use less, less liquids. Um, so I happen to have an extra 120 roll that I use for practice. And the way that I load them, I don't know if this is correct, but you know, learn everything yourself, kind of assume things. So there's two tabs here, uh, here and here, obviously, just like anything. You load it in, and there's no ball bearings. Like, I don't, I don't know if you've used Patterson tanks or Patterson reels. And so what I tend to do is just load it like this. If it gets hung up, there's two little indents here and here, and you can just push along with your fingers. And I think it's actually a pretty good system. So then, once it's on there, you can spool it until it hits the red thing. When it hits the red thing, it's on there for good. Pop it on your reel, or on your core, and then you pop the core on like this, and you're all set. Uh, that's light tight, obviously pop it in the Jobo. This thing's dirty, I need to clean it. I don't really use this one much. But if you'll notice, the the tank here doesn't really touch the water. So I don't know, I prefer the smaller tanks just because they're easier to load. The reels are easier easier to load. And I feel like you get more, more reels for the amount of liquid you're using. You'll also have four bottles. I don't have the four bottles because I just don't. Um, and then the graduated cylinders, which I don't really use either. Um, so you just pop it on there, pretty easy. It doesn't really touch the water, but I think the heat probably is coming up to, probably keeps it pretty close to temperature. You can also load it higher, and like I said, if you have your directions that tell you otherwise to load it all the way to the top, great, you know, then load it farther up with water so that the water keeps the tank in the reel or the tanks in the water. I usually put my Jobo, the, the bigger Jobo is over a sink but when I use this one I just put a paper tray underneath of the hose so that it um, so that it doesn't leak. Something like that. And then push it a little further over, which means that So once you've got it all set up, you turn it on. And then I put a piece of tape over this because I load it in the dark. Um, I load all my reels right next to it because this whole room is dark. Um, got a sweet little light switch. So I just put a piece of tape over it. It turned the red light turns off when you're at temperature. I also added a digital thermometer, which I think is better than it just strings in, as opposed to using uh, the Jobo thermometer, which is analog. Um, you'll get one, but it looks like this. I just I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So your Jobo has the higher speed, which is 75 RPO. Or the CPE3, the CPE2 Plus has 75 RPM. Um, all you do is you turn it on. You leave it on while it's uh, while you're pouring. It gets a uh, good circulation in there. Pour it right in. You put your tank under your hose. 
you do it for a certain amount of time. And then when you're done, ready to pour out your chemicals and pour in the next one, what you do is you, I leave it running. It's designed to be left running. Lift up, it pours out. Lower it back down, it'll keep spinning. Pour in your next chemical. While it's spinning, uh, that way the chemicals aren't ever sitting in one specific spot on the film. It's pretty simple. Uh, that's really it. When you're all done, turn everything off. Uh, I usually empty this one a lot more than this one because I leave the pump going. Um, that's about it. It's really pretty simple and it makes it much easier. I will say that with this one, while it's going, you do have to tend to pour a little more slowly or else it'll leak out the back. And on the smaller one, the motor is only good for 600 milliliters. So don't overload it with over 600 milliliters. And the tanks, conveniently enough, I'll just show you in here, have your capacities on them, rotation, 160 milliliters. And then it gives you the film count. Also, the tanks all link together, which is really cool. So like this one, this tank is just one of these, two of these, and I got 10 rolls of 120 out of this. I don't know how many rolls of 35 because I don't really shoot or develop 35 that often. But one extra one of these on here for the CPE2 or CPE3 is pretty much perfect. Hopefully the lift will come installed on yours already because when I bought the lift after the CPE2, I kind of got it on there at a weird angle. And everything else is pretty easy. Yours actually has the new style lift, which is really nice. It clicks in a lot more firmly. These little clips are not that great. So, there you go. If you have any questions, just you know how to get at me. Yeah, so this is a new style lift. It has these clips, which are seem a little strange, but it's actually they're actually pretty nice. Um, not that there's anything wrong with the smaller lift, but on this one it's just, it seems like it's more well thought out. And it just, you just clip it right in there. It's perfect, it works really well. I, I really like this style lift, as opposed to that style lift. Not that there's particularly anything wrong with this smaller one, it's just this one, the, the bigger one, or the, the newer lift is just that much better um, on an already pretty good design. One other thing as I move the camera over here, take it off the old TP pod here. I don't know if this has done, if this is bowed out or what, but for some reason I cannot get this stupid thing to stay up. So hopefully you'll have better luck with that. Like I said, I don't use these for anything unless I'm measuring out quantities for a very small tank or one single tank, but you might find a real use for them.